Today I'm going to be showing you how I make my puff stitch fingerless gloves. Uh, the pattern is up on my blog, the written pattern down here in the description. It's been on my blog for about a year now, but I thought seeing as though I had done a little tutorial for my Fantel shell stitch gloves, I should make one for my puff stitch fingerless gloves. So unfortunately I don't have the yarn that I used in the original written pattern anymore. I actually used my original gloves, which you can see here. I actually used hand dyed sock yarn. Now I'm all out of the gray and rainbow and I only have the white and rainbow left. But obviously white is not a very practical color for gloves. So I thought instead of just replicating what's on the blog, I'd show you a couple of different options as to what you can use. It's quite a forgiving pattern. You can use anything. Um, a really good substitute is Head Over Heels, this sock yarn from Stylecraft. They work out really nicely actually and it's super soft and very hard wearing, which is great for gloves. Or another favorite of mine is Ice Yarns. This one is Prima Donna. I think it's classed as a sock yarn. It's quite fine. It doesn't look it, but it does work up quite fine. And again, really good for these gloves. And they look beautiful when they're done in a rainbow. But for today, I'm going to show you, because Christmas is coming, a sparkly version using King Cole Galaxy Double Knit. Again, double knit. Quite fine, really. A little bit hairy. But the good thing about this one is the sequins are actually really soft. You'd think it'd be itchy and horrible, but when you wear them, you don't even feel them. So the color I'm using today is coffee. Interesting looking coffee color. It's more of a, well, here's my coffee. Mm, I suppose. But it, you use a full ball. Now, I made up one to obviously show you. And this, I think, has used a fraction more than what I actually have left. So I have, waiting in the wings just in case, a little bit of scrap left over from another pair of gloves I would have made. So keep that in reserve. I'm fairly confident that if you are cautious with how long you leave your yarn ends, etc., you should be able to get one pair of gloves out of this 50 gram ball. Might be worth buying two just in case. So that's a little bit about yarn. For the gloves themselves, you'll need, just like before, a large eye needle for weaving in your ends, particularly when dealing with the little sequins, they can be a bugger to weave in. So just a heads up for that. You'll need your scissors for cutting your yarn. And for these gloves, I'm using a 4.5 mil crochet hook. Same as before, try them on as you go. You may find you need a slightly larger crochet hook, slightly smaller crochet hook. These are a little bit baggy on me, but then I do have freakishly small wrists like a child, so I'm not always the best gauge. So once again, I've gone for best overall universal one size fits all. So that's enough rambling. I shall crack on and show you how you make these puff stitch fingerless gloves. Right, so. Just like in my Fantail shell stitch gloves, I am a fan of the foundation single crochet. You can substitute this if you wanted to for chain 31, join with a little slip stitch, and then put 30 single crochets all in the round. I will try and show you what I'm doing. Again, I've picked terrible yarn to try and teach someone what I'm doing, but I shall show you anyway. I'm going to be a little bit conservative with my yarn end because I think I'm running out of yarn, but we shall soon see. So start with a slip knot, pop it on your hook. And then for foundation single crochet, you're making the chain, like for the foundation chain and your first row of single crochets all at the same time. So chain two. And then you're gonna pop your hook into that first chain, but not just the top bit. You want to try and catch two loops, which is totally fiddly with fine yarn and a big hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull back through the chain and lift it up slightly. And then you're gonna yarn over, pull through one 
two loops. So that forms the chain. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through those final two, which forms the single crochet on top. One more time. So go into that little chain that you just formed underneath, both loops. Yarn over and pull it up. Level with your hook, give yourself a bit of room. Yarn over, pull through one loop, forms a chain. Yarn over, pull through the final two, that forms a single crochet. So that's two. You're going to need 30 of these. So you crack on and make 30 foundation single crochet and I shall meet you in a bit. A way to check that you actually have 30, because if you've lost count, like I did, it's crazy, you can lose count when you're only counting to 30, is you can count the loops on top. So you can make sure you've got the right amount of foundation single crochet in your chain. So I'm just going to count mine quickly. Okay, so I have got 30 after all. <laughs> So you're going to stretch it out, and we just happen to still have hold of it, and you're going to bring it round. Now be careful not to twist your chain. Just get that out of the way. And you're going to join with a slip stitch to your first foundation single crochet that you did. So it's a little bit fiddly, this bit. Oh, there we go, right on cue. So it's a little bit fiddly. So it kind of helps to hold on to the side you're coming from as well. Mine's twisted slightly. Don't worry about this little bump here. That all gets woven in at the end. Okay, so you have your 30 foundation single crochet. You're going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And you're going to place a single crochet directly where you just came from. So right in that join there. And you're gonna put a single crochet in every one of your stitches around. So you're gonna have 30 single crochet by the end of this row. Now, after having told you to be careful not to twist your chain, I twisted my chain. But for the purposes of this, it doesn't really matter. Let's pop your 31 in there. And you're going to slip stitch to the very first single crochet that you did. So ignore your chain one. That's here. You can slip stitch to the top of that single crochet. See, I can fix that little tiny twist when I weave this in, like that. No, one more will ever know. Okay, so chain one. And you're going to pop a single crochet, just like before, right into that same stitch right there. Little single crochet. And again, same as before, a single crochet in every single stitch around, so you will have 30 single crochet. Twenty-nine. 
28, 29, 30. Now slip stitch again, ignore the chain one, slip stitch to the top of your first single crochet. That's your little cuff section done. And feel free to make that a little bit longer if you want to, but the puff gloves are quite nice and long anyway, so you don't really need to. So now we're gonna move on to the puff rows. So chain one, and you're gonna be putting a puff directly into that same space where you've just come from. Now a little word on puffs. Sometimes when I'm teaching people puff stitch, they find that they've got really small, tight, angry little puffs. The trick to a puff stitch, keep it loose and keep it tall. So I'll show you how I do a puff stitch. So you're going to yarn over and pop your hook into that stitch there. Yarn over at the back, bring it up. Now the trick is lift it up. So you're giving yourself wriggle room and a bit of air in between those puffs. So again, yarn over, go into the stitch, catch the yarn at the back, come back, lift it up. So we're gonna do that two more times. Yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over at the back, bring it back through, lift it up. Last time, yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over, come back through, lift it up. Do you see how it gives you a bit more bounce in your puff? So then you will have quite a lot of loops on your hook. Two, four, six, eight, nine loops in total. So you're going to yarn over and pull through all nine of those loops. Now it's really easy to get your hook caught on all these loops as you're coming through. So kind of turn your hook so it's facing down and pull it through nice and gently. And then to finish your puff stitch, you secure it with a chain one. Then you've got like a nice, fat, bouncy puff. So you're now gonna skip a stitch and put another puff stitch in here. So you're on over, into the stitch, come through, pull it up. I'm going to do it four times in total, the yarn over, pull it up. Yarn over, pull through, pull your hook down and pull through all those loops. Chain one to secure it, or lock it down. So you're going to skip a stitch, puff, skip a stitch, puff, skip a stitch, puff, all the way round. So you'll have 15 puff stitches in total. Don't forget to lock your puff with that little chain one. puffs all the way around and you're going to secure the slip stitch to the top of your first puff. Now you kind of naturally want to put it there but don't put it there you want to put it in this little chain one lock that you do at the end I don't know if you can see that so you're actually going to put your hook not in that bit in the very top up here because then it pulls your puff up straight and it doesn't sort of mess with how your puff looks because then they all look the same rather than taking it from this side here. And then you're going to slip stitch into the space in between your puffs. Chain one. And from this point on, it gets a wee bit easier and a bit faster because you're going to put a puff stitch in all the spaces in between your puffs from the rows below. So you'll have 15 again, but you're just working into the space 
rather than into a stitch. Don't forget, you've got to put a puff stitch in here from the row below. And then just like before, you're going to slip stitch to the top of your puff. Now just remember it's over here, not here. and then slip stitch into the next space, chain one, and then again you are going to put a puff stitch in all the spaces in between the puffs. Now you're going to do 15 more rows like this so you'll have 17 puff stitch rows in total, which should keep you busy for a little while, so I will see you on the other side. Right, 17 rows of puff stitches. Not convinced my yarn is going to last. I may need to bring in emergency backup yarn, but we'll see. So you've got 17 rows, which makes for a really lovely, long, generous cuff on your arm. So now we're gonna work on the thumb hole gap. So slip into, if you haven't already, the chain space a little gap space hole, just like you have been doing all the way down. And you are going to chain three and turn your work around. So you're gonna be working in the opposite direction. So you're gonna put a puff stitch, not here, in between these two puffs here, from your final, your round, blah, from the row below. So you're gonna put a puff stitch in there Careful not to catch your puffs. So you've got your chain three, then you've got a puff. And just like before, you're going to puff in every single space around, and you're going to end with a puff in the same space as your chain three. And then your last puff in that same space as the chain three. But do not join them. Because you're creating a gap. So you're going to chain three. Turn your work. And you're going to put one puff stitch in each gap around so that you end up with 15 puffs and your last puff is going to go in this gap between your puff and chain three that you did on the last round. So your last puff in this chain three space here. Chain three, turn, same again. Puff in every gap around, ending with your last puff in the chain three space gap area. <laughs> Oh, 
apologies for that. Dog for barking, which meant yarn delivery. Final puff in there. That's quite an easy one to forget because it kind of blends in. So just remember to pop your final puff in that chain free space. Like that. Chain three. Turn. Same again. Puff in all the spaces. Before I go any further, before I finish this round, this is never going to last. So I'm just going to quickly join in my scrap little bit. And join the two yarns together so I can carry on. If you only had one ball of this and you wanted to not play yarn chicken like I have, you could easily make your wristlet rows fewer. So instead of having 17 in total, you could have 10 or however however much you want. That way you would get a full pair of gloves. Or maybe don't be so generous with your puffs like I am. I do love a good puff stitch. So maybe I'm doing more yarn overs than is needed. So I'm just going to join these two quickly. Right, that's that small issue dealt with. I'll just finish up this row. Two puffs left. And don't forget, the last puff goes in that chain three space there. Right, that's the end of the chain three turn, chain three turn. This row, you're going to chain one and turn. And you're gonna put a puff just as before in every space, but we're gonna end with a chain four join. So do all your puffs and I shall meet you on the other side. Ah, there's the knot from where I just joined my yarn. That couldn't have fallen more perfectly in the center of a puff, see? You can't even see that it's there. puff in that chain three space. Don't forget that one. And then you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And join with a slip stitch to the top of your first puff. Like so. Chain one, turn, and you're going to put your first puff stitch right on this chain four, just in the space around it. And then you're going to puff in every single space around, just like before, ending in this space here. So you'll still have 15 puffs. And join with a slip stitch to this puff that lives on your chain four space. slip stitch into the gap and just like on the wrist section all down here you're going to chain one puff in all the spaces join with a slip stitch slip stitch into the space go around you're going to do that four more times you'll have four more rows of puffs 
I'm just going to double check I gave you the right information there. Nope. I knew it. Three more times. Not four. I lied. Three more times. So three more rows. Not four. That'll teach me. So you finish off with four rows in total, including that one where you put the puff on your chain four join. One, two, three, four. Now to finish off your gloves, you can slip stitch into there if you want to, but you don't have to actually have to do it because I've said to. You're going to chain one, single crochet in that space. And then you're going to put a single crochet in the top of your puff. Single crochet in the space, single crochet in the top of your puff, in the space, top of your puff, in the space, top of the puff, all the way around. So you'll have 30 stitches in total. Don't forget to end on a single crochet at the top of your final puff. Then you can cut your yarn. And pull it through. However, a word about the sequin yarn. These little sequins, as pretty as they are, are a total sodding nightmare. So before you even attempt to pull that through, because it will just get caught like that. Take your scissors, and if you look really carefully, you can see that they are attached by a single thread that runs through the yarn. If you just snip that little tiny bit of thread, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. This tiny bit here. Snip that, and you can take off the sequins. And then that way, you can pull it all the way through. Then you can, I'll get rid of those. You can thread your needle, weave in your yarn ends up here. Weave in your yarn ends down here. But more importantly, you can try on your beautifully squishy puff stitch glove. You can see how generous in length it is. And the sequins, like I say, as much of a pain in the butt they are to work with, they do look really pretty. So that's it. Hopefully all that made sense. Apologies for fluffing the pattern slightly there at the end. But having nice, warm, squishy hands, which sparkle, it's always got to be a bonus. If you have any questions about this pattern anything like that you can leave a comment down here on this section you can leave a comment on my blog you can find me on facebook you can find me on instagram you can find me all over really so hopefully this all made sense enjoy your gloves and i shall see you again soon bye okay so i know i just said goodbye but just out of curiosity I was just wondering how much extra of this yarn you actually need to make these gloves. Because it's all in good me playing yarn chicken and running out and ha just happening to have a scrap hanging around of the same colour. But I thought it might be actually quite useful for you guys to know how much extra you need. So it's a full ball, 50 grams. Can you see that? 50 grams. Let's put this down here so you can actually see. So my gloves actually weigh 60 grams so you need 10 grams more 
than this 50 gram ball of yarn. So if we take a quick little look, I could probably do some maths here on the fly. If as long as it has the yardage. So it's telling me that for this yarn, it has a yardage of 191 yards. So we just need 10% of that, whatever that is. I can't work it out off the top of my head, but I shall pop in the actual how much additional yarn you need, or more rather, how much yardage you actually need to make these gloves, because that's gonna be a lot more helpful than it doesn't matter what the weight of the yarn is, because we can work it out from there. Because I know a couple of people had asked how much of the yarn, my hand-eyed yarn I'd used, and of course I didn't measure it, didn't think about it. So I shall work it out for you and pop it in here and on the pattern on my blog, exactly how many yards of yarn you need so that you don't end up playing stupid games of yarn chicken right in the middle of a YouTube tutorial like I just did. Awesome.